Welcome to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox Broadcasting Live from the Hasselson Studio here on Market Street in Corning. And speaking of Market Street in Corning, we're going to be talking with Kristen Brewer a little bit later on on the program. She's with the Gaffer District. They've got some exciting events coming up. So that's a little bit later on in the program. Let me start as I always do. I put my contact information up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, we've been receiving a lot of great uh, comments and suggestions, and I appreciate those. And I'm, as a matter of fact, uh, going to read a few of those in just a moment, but I wanted to put the contact information up. As you see on the bottom of your screen by the little wave symbol, uh, we also have the phone number down there at all times, so you can always contact me throughout the program. I try to check. I, every once in a while I miss one. I did miss a great uh, question uh, for Senator Romero yesterday, and I apologize over that. Um, as a matter of fact, it was a topic I wanted to bring up anyway, and so we'll invite, uh, and we talked off the air, we'll have uh, the senator on soon to address some of the things we just didn't have time to cover yesterday. But that leads to my first mention from yesterday, a nice uh, email. Senator Tom O'Mara is wide awake to what's happening and to what is right and wrong with New York. Very informative interview. Thanks again. Well, thank you for reaching out. I appreciate that. It's always nice to hear from people. Not, not just, like I always say, doesn't always just have to be good. <laughs> you can feel free uh, to weigh in on uh, any subject or add to the conversation that we're having. And that's one that I'm going to go to right now. I received this from a very astute viewer. Regarding this hot summer, which, of course, uh, has been reported <laughs> all day, every day, um, regarding this hot summer, which is being misreported, as usual, by the corporate media, something I've not heard since early June is that this record hot weather was expected as a part of the natural cycle, featuring an early El Nino. They must have issued a directive not to mention El Nino, so it can all be put on global warming. And, of course, that has been... Um, <laughs> The major conversation if you watch the news um, and that also ties in with the next part of the conversation and you also hear that heat kills more people although there are different analyses on this it is dishonest not to cite the most recent most scientific study done yet on this published in the lancet 2016. this is figure uh figure two i'm going to show that in just a second from the study fraction of all cause mortality attribute to moderate and extreme hot and cold temperature by country. I see no comparison. And here is that exact figure. There you go. There's the, the graph. See, we do everything here on Frankly Speaking. So that gives you a little idea of extreme cold, moderate cold, moderate heat, extreme heat. So I appreciate that. And as you said, uh, not something El Nino not being reported by the media for quite some time. So please weigh in on all this. As I said, after the break, we're going to be talking with Kristen Brewer. That's coming up in just a moment. Stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Aikum, and this is the M.A. Neal Financial Services section of our program. We're being joined by Kristen Brewer from the Gaffer District. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. You've had a great summer so far in the Gaffer District. We have had a busy summer. Yeah. We've had a very busy yeah. summer. <laughs> How, so you mentioned that busy. How do you keep just planning more and more events? Don't you ever say, hey, let's take a weekend off, for heaven's sakes? You know, we should, but we don't. <laughs> we don't. It's yeah. just, we have fun while we're doing it. So. Well, I'm sure. And, and in the winter, you're thankful that you did all That's this. That's our I'm time sure. to take a breath. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> so tell us about the upcoming Cruise and Community Night. Okay, so I will tell you that Cruise and Community Night and then the subsequent um, Community Night next month um, are brought to us by uh, Williams Toyota of Elmira. They are a generous sponsor, and they're going to be at the event. Oh, that's great. With some really cool new cars. Um, and... That's kind of the theme of it as cruising is, um, you know, we have car themes um, as far as Williams Toyota. We have a um, car show that's going to be there from 607 Motorsports, who we're really happy to be partnering with. And then kind of a, another cool younger uh, car part of it is that, that you know, the Power Wheel competition. Yeah, I want to talk about that, all about that, because it sounds like a lot of fun. But I want to remind people, this is on Bridge Street between yes. Riverside Drive and Pulteney Street. Um, so, yes, yeah, so let's talk about the activity for the kids. All right, so I'll start with power wheels, but there's much more than oh, that. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, so kids can bring their power wheels if they have them. 
Okay. Um, you can sign up online at gafferdistrict.com. Actually, any of our, it's an event on Facebook too that you can um, directly link from there. And you can sign up, you can sign up the night of the event too. You can oh. come the night of the event. And what it is is um, if you have a power wheel, you bring it, you race it. Oh, that's neat. And there's uh, um, age brackets, so best time in age brackets when there's a first, second, and third place. Um, and then the overall grand prize is a completely decked out wrapped power wheels <laughs> from Williams Toyota wow. Elmira. Right. Yeah, so the best times will get that. Um, you can find where, where you, if you are gonna sign up or if you are coming for the, that part of the event, it's right at the four corners there where East and West William and Bridge Street meet and you'll you'll see it because there'll be a bunch of really happy kids with cool cars. Wait, well, I was gonna say, it's <laughs> good, it'd be fun to participate in it, of course, if you're a kid, but it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun to just watch. So we've done it, not to this level before, yeah. and it is, it's like, it should be a TV show. Right. They really should. <laughs> How competitive do they get? Um, they're pretty serious. Yeah, I would think so. And the so. parents are a little serious, <laughs> Probably too. more serious, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and that's so neat that the grand prize is, so it's like a decked out power. Yeah, they, they wrapped it. They, wow. It's a really cool car, and there's going to be another one to give away. We're, we decided, because we've gotten such a great um, response from it, we're going to do it again. Oh. The next one, and that Williams Toyota has given us another How nice is that? to give away. It's fantastic. There's something that bothers me about this power wheel sounding nicer than my actual vehicle. I know. I, I get it, you. <laughs> <laughs> but this is fun. You said there's other activities for kids as well? Yeah, so we have... Um, martial art events coordinator oh. so good at kids stuff he got us in um there's like a carnival series of uh, under a kind of a blow-up um pavilion mm -hmm. that's going to have like the traditional car um carnival things like ring toss and things like that oh, and yeah. there's going to be some like candy prize giveaways um we have a bouncy house because of course you have to right and a slide and um a few other just fun things that the kids can play with um I'm trying to think of all of them. There was, I'm sure I've one. seen a list of all of them, and they're all fun and cool, and they're not things that we've normally had other than the slide and bouncy thing. But well, th and that's what I think so neat about this because it's perfect for the kids. Obviously, we talked about that yes. at the beginning, but because of the the great vehicles and all the the live music, which we'll talk about in a second, it's perfect for adults as well. It is. It so, is. Yeah. Um, Definitely if you come hungry. Yeah, I was just going to say, bring your, <laughs> that's my next note, bring your appetite. Yeah. I, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of great food on the street. There is, and um, just to highlight a couple of our our um, local restaurants, yeah. um, I was, Carrie's is going to come out because it's so of course. convenient for I them. I would hope. And they're going to have like the traditional summer type food, you know, um, I think she said speedies and hamburgers and sa sausage, peppers and onions, you know, those things that you uh, can't you walk have by. To have. Yeah, yeah. You got to have them. You can them smell, smell three in blocks air. away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Slam and Jammin's coming over. Oh, and great. they have a little food truck they're bringing over. And then we've got a couple different food vendors over there for that. Um, there's obviously, there's, there's going to be quite a large stage over there um, right around J&T Auto. Uh, there's a couple acts that are playing for that. Darn it, I wish I'd written No, that I've down. got them here. I'll, be, cool, I'll mention them in cool. just a moment. And there's ice cream, though. you got to mention that. When oh, you think there summer. is ice cream. Yeah. Ben from Dippity, Dippity Doodahs is coming over with his homemade ice cream. Um, so it, you really shouldn't walk away from this hungry. I would hope not. <laughs> it's Cruising Community Night. It's this Friday from 5 to 9 p.m. And that's Bridge Street between Riverside Drive and Pulteney Street. Uh, like I said, there's just so much planning involved all summer for you guys. Was this, this seems like a no-brainer. This seems just like perfect for the summer. Yeah. How did the planning go? Um, it went it went well, mm -hmm. actually. Um, you know, it was kind of, like you said, no-brainer. It's the yeah. theme with Williams Toyota right. as our sponsor to have the um, car show portion. And um, it just, it, it came together. Luckily, uh, with events like these, I mean, there's work on our end, but a lot of our um, partners and community organizations, they, they want to be out there. They want to see people. So that makes it that makes it easy in that sense to get people to come. Well, and that's what it seems like the the community wants to be involved in activities mm -hmm. like this, you know. Yeah. So when you when I'm reading the list of people that are bringing food or just uh, displays, it just sounds like a community a community feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So the bands that we were talking about, live music performances by Chasing Neon, that's from 5 till 6:30 p.m. and then the headlining band Blue Eyed Soul from 7 to 9 p.m. So you can get all your food in and then dance. Yes. Get the energy from the food and then dance. Uh, and also, I, I thought this was neat, and I've heard you, you do this at a couple different events, What you can document all the fun at the, the selfie stations. Yes, we have a really unusual selfie station this time. We try to incorporate them in every event because yeah. it's fun for people to share their memories, and it's great for us to get a little gaffer tag, of course. tag out in there too. But <laughs> win -win. we have a woman coming from, and a, a balloon artist actually coming from um, Central PA, and she is going to make a custom summer in downtown um, selfie station frame oh wow it's gonna be so cool i it, 
I just can't even wait. So that's going to be something very unusual for us, or, or new, actually. Yeah. And it doesn't even sound like you have to take a selfie. You just want to take a picture of how neat it's going to look, Yeah, right? it is. It is. Oh, it that's is pretty cool. cool. She even bought balloons to match the logo. So Wow. Got it. I'm I want to go just for this <laughs> and everything else. I, I should have asked, what uh, what's the age group? Like, I can't sign up for the power wheel race. No, unfortunately, okay. you can't. I aged no. out. But no, what, what, uh, is there an age limit? Um, there, there is an age limit, and there are the age brackets that you can sign okay. up on. Uh, and, and that's all and online. that's all online, okay. yeah. So gafferdistrict.com. Uh, so also, I wanted to mention this because I was talking to somebody off the air. Uh, the Summer Concert Series, how's that been going? Oh, it's been going great. That's what actually. I've heard. Yeah, yeah um, we're starting to pick up speed on the north side. That was a new addition in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, getting, you know, having it a couple of years and having people know that it's over there is, is a, um, helpful each year as it goes by. And then, of course, the um, Centerway Square one, it's just it's been packed every yeah. every weekend. Last weekend was kind of a gospel soul. That was really cool. So uh, what goes into picking the music? You just want to find different kinds of genres? Is that how it is? We do try to look for diverse genres, and we also we work with um, the Arts Council okay. to help us identify okay. yeah. local, regional. Of course. Um, and then our events manager, Marshall Ferrari, is... Um, formerly worked at Tags. He has wonderful music oh, connections. Okay. And he's been thrilling us. He's the one who brought in fuel for yeah, Glass Fest. That was stuff, huge. So yeah. yeah. Then he's already thinking about next year for Glass Of course. Fest, so. uh, well, yeah, you guys probably plan a year round <laughs> for do. that, right? <laughs> right. So uh, we're talking about, and this is going to be such a fun night, Cruising Community Night this Friday from 5 to 9 p.m. on Bridge Street. I want to highlight that between Riverside Drive and Pulteney Street. But for those uh, that are watching right now, what's the rest of the summer hold for the Gaffer District? Well, so <laughs> a month from now, we'll have another... Um, We'll have another community night with the theme is food. We're okay. calling it Bites on Bridge. Ooh, that's a great idea. Um, still, you know, we're still putting it together. I mean, it's predominantly, but we always let last minute people come in if we have room for them. So it's going to be food trucks, our local restaurants that want to come over or are already over there. Sure. Um, and then some like craft art, artisan vendors that are kind of summer themed things. Yeah. And um, we'll have the kids activities again. Um, so it, it, it's it's just it's kind of what we're looking for is that old fashioned summer yeah. come enjoy with your family and see your friends because that's kind of what it's all about to come out for the community nights like that. And I think last time when we were on the program, you were on the program, we talked about how COVID kind of just ruined everything. Yeah, so now, obviously, that was kind of an obvious statement. But when you look at events like this, it's kind of what we all miss the most mm -hmm. when that was going on. Yeah, truly. Yeah. That's what we hear, too, from the people that come down. It's so nice to be out and yeah. seeing people again. See your neighbors you haven't yeah. seen in three years. <laughs> and it, Yeah, exactly. And we have definitely you know, fill the summer with enough programming for them to do that. You know, I, I know probably many people know about our farmer's market, which That's is great. just crazy yeah. popular. I barely need to advertise that people just come. Yeah. Um, we have the music series. We have um, the Centerway Storytime program yeah. for every other Tuesday of the month. Um, last, yesterday, Santa came. Oh, is that, why, is that why there's all the people? We had 200 people. I thought there. at least, I walked by, I, I couldn't figure out what was going on, but I missed Santa. Santa came in his summer gear, ready <laughs> to talk a little bit about what was coming at the end of the year. Oh. And then we had our Christmas, our Crystal City Christmas sponsor, um, First Heritage, handing out books and pencils and Oh, isn't that stuff. great? It was a really cool day. But it was July 25th, so yeah. we were calling it Christmas in July. Of course, it's perfect. And that's why I recommend everybody go to gafferdistrict.com because I, I think even though I'm here every day, all day, uh, I, I've missed some of these events. I know. There's, there's so many going on. Oh, yeah, it, it is it is nutty. Um, so, and then also our, our businesses this week are kind of, you know, coming with us on that Christmas in July theme and doing their summer sidewalk sales this great weekend. Great idea. Yeah, great so. idea. So, so it's really a whole weekend event. Friday, you go to the uh, cruising community night, and then you can shop yeah. on on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's great. Well, uh, best of luck. But I don't think you need it. All these events are packed every time you have one. But I appreciate you being on the show and telling us more about it. And I want to wish everybody that's joining the Power Wheel contest good luck. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> I got to see pictures. I'll that. send you some pictures. Uh, please do. <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show. Let's talk again soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. <laughs> Well, thanks again to Kristen Brewer for being on the M.A. Neal Financial Services section of our program. Find out more at GafferDistrict.com. I'm not exaggerating when I say that if you go to their calendar, it seems like there is a, a pretty major event uh, every day in the Gaffer District. So GafferDistrict.com. This is Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frank Acom, and we are broadcasting live from the Hesselson's studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. I did receive an email and it's about an art article by Jonathan Turley. We mention him a lot because he writes for the New York Post, kind of a, a, a legal scribe, and he's, he's a 
writes some really great articles. And this piece, I wanted to mention it yesterday, but we just had so much to cover uh, with Senator Tom O'Meara that I never had a chance to really get to many of the news stories of the day. And he put, you can find this at the New York Post, or you can find it at his website, jonathanturley.org. And it's titled, Nothing to See Here, Members in the Media Panic as the Biden Scandal Mounts. And it's a fascinating piece, and that's why I was so disappointed. That was the main one I wanted to bring up yesterday. I just, I just did not have the time. Uh, he quotes uh, Margaret Brennan uh, on CBS Face the Nation. I wonder after this plea happens if you would advise your party to move on. That was to uh, Chris Christie. She asked that. Have you noticed that even when I bring up the articles, and we're going to talk more about that later because I have a couple I want to get to before, but I just received this, and I'm glad that it sparked my memory from yesterday. The media all day uh, today, this morning, and the last I don't know, month or two keep saying, well, once the plea is in, it's done. It's done, nothing to see here. I, and, and I can't believe how many times you can read that in one single article. Um, I think it was Collinson. From, yeah, Stephen Collinson from CNN um, trying to equate uh, the suggestion of impeachment against Biden to, well, they're just doing this as Republicans to uh, take away from Trump scandals. It's the same concept here. Nothing to see here. Hunter Biden's done. We know the argument originally was um, that, well, you can't talk about this because Joe Biden loves his son. And Hunter uh, is an addict. So drop it. You know, that that was the first, I guess you would say, threat, <laughs> if you will, uh, by the media. But again, find this piece for yourself. We just don't have time to get into it. But it, he mentioned something in it that I mentioned where they even tried during the, um, uh, the, the committee meeting on it with the IRS whistleblowers to say, well, no, there's two-tiered justice. Uh, they, they, when I say they, uh, the Democrats in, in this discussion have tried to co-op the words that Republicans uh, have been using. But this is, again, it's a fascinating piece. We just don't have time to get to all of it. Uh, you can find it at jonathanturley.org. That's .org. Uh, but as he says at the end, polls show the public is not moving on from this scandal and now view this as a major scandal. Majority believe that Hunter has received special protection in this investigation. While the media can continue to suppress the evidence and allegations within their own echo-chambered platform, truth like water has a way of finding a way out. The scandal is moving forward with or without the media. Jonathan Turley, attorney, professor at George Washington University Law School. So thank you for sending that. I did notice it yesterday. It's a great piece and I highly recommend it. We do have to take a short break. Excuse me, <clears throat> got a cough here. Um, when we come back, I want a couple other things before we dive a little bit further into Hunter because Hunter uh, will be at court today to enter that plea deal. We will talk about what that means just a little bit. But before that, I have a, another interesting poll. Every time I have a poll about what the country feels right now, <laughs> it's not always positive. So keep that in mind. But I hope that you'll stay with us here on Frankly Speaking on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on Frankly Speaking. I'm your host. We're broadcasting. I'm your host. I should have introduced myself. Frank Akam. And we are broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio here on Market Street in Corning. This is a, a troubling trend. We've talked about it with law enforcement, with the military, and I believe as well with uh, patriotism and uh, believing in the greatness of America. The media and pop culture and, and academia as well as we talk about in uh, the college level universities the trend is to put down those things to put down patriotism you know in uh, tv shows they'll they'll portray the patriotic guy as as bad that he's the um, deadly militia member or something like that or in movies look movies and television but in pop culture in general um, law enforcement military mock and ridicule or just put down and demean and the same goes for the idea of patriotism, and this coming from Axios, the, num the numbers are, are very troubling. I know since the, we went on the air, I've talked about people losing faith in religion and, and faith in faith uh, and community in patriotism. This just uh, kind of piggybacks onto that. Pride in national identity is lowest among the 18 to 34 group. There's the poll you see right there. Um, in the most recent Gallup poll, Americans 55 and older were nearly three 
times more likely to be extremely prideful of their nationality than younger generations. But who can blame those younger generations when they've essentially been indoctrinated their whole lives, not just by pop culture, but also by their professors, by their teachers, not all of the teachers. I'm just saying and very often we've, we've learned of these discussions that are being had in class about uh, the thoughts on America by uh, the education system. Overall, 39% of U.S. adults say they're extremely proud to be an American. 39%. And that's overall age groups, all age demographics. Meanwhile, only 18% of those aged 18 to 34 said the same. So 18 to 34 year olds, only 18% of them are extremely proud to be an American. Wow. Um, meanwhile, well, no, let's go by comparison. In 2013, not that long ago, 10 years ago, 85% of those aged 18 to 29 said they were extremely or very proud to be an American. So what this is telling us is the percentage of US adults of all ages who say they're extremely proud to be an American remains near a record low per Gallup. Again, that's coming from Gallup and this piece from Axios. So it just paints a larger picture of what we've been discussing so frequently on this program, which is um, when we're being inundated with negative uh, messages about the, uh, the country, about faith, about law enforcement. Eventually, for some people, it, it sticks. Right? If they turn on the nightly news or they turn on their favorite television program, which uh, that's why we recommend everybody tune in here instead to hear a very different side of things. Uh, but if they tune into those things and every night or day, depending on when they're watching, it's a negative story about community, about the country, about law enforcement, about the military, some people, it's you know, it's the idea of propaganda that eventually it is going to stick, unfortunately, and that's why we're seeing more polls like this. And unfortunately, as well, not to keep using that term, but it's not just 18 to 34; it's down across all uh, age brackets. So that's why we're trying to change things here. On frankly speaking, we're trying to highlight community. We're trying to highlight uh, how great this country is, and. Uh, offer you a, uh, a different perspective than you'll see in the mainstream media. Okay, we're good on time, I, and I don't know how to segue <laughs> into a completely different topic, but we mentioned earlier that piece by Jonathan Turley about Hunter Biden. Hunter is going to appear in federal court today and enter a guilty plea after this year's long, five years long federal probe. He will meet in front of the judge at 10 a.m., this morning what we need to know and I, I could have put that up on the screen but i pretty much said exactly what needed to be said according to the wall street journal they put together and this is a prime example of what turley had to say which is once he enters this plea it's over once he enters guilty it's over there's no sense talking about it anymore yes it'll get some coverage but it's dead in the water now at this point but they did put together by sadie german uh, kind of what you need to know a play-by-play of uh, Hunter Biden heading to court. Will, this is a question a lot of people are asking, and uh, Michael Goodwin has a different take on this that we'll mention in just a second. But they're asking the question, will the U.S. District Judge, last name Narika, I, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I basically only read it. I don't really hear it that often. Is widely expected to approve the plea deal. But given the high-profile nature of the case, legal observers said the judge is likely to ask a lot of questions about this agreement and how they got to this agreement, in part to make sure the public knows she has fully vetted its terms. Republicans have decried the plan as a sweetheart deal, and that is very true. That's a term they use very often, and it is. I have face value looking at it, a sweetheart deal, because uh, I think it, the simple uh, test for this is if you were to get in trouble for these same things, if you were to be caught for these same things, you as... Um, average everyday American do you think you would have got the same plea deal as Hunter Biden did I think that's a fair question to ask and I think you know no matter if you're a Biden supporter Trump supporter anybody support I think you would have to in your heart of hearts agree that you would not just alone on the gun charge would not have gotten the same plea deal so the judge um, 
is most likely not to sent, uh, sentence Hunter uh, today, but will set a date for sentencing at the hearing today. Now, under this agreement, uh, he will be under probation. That's, uh, that's it. Um, the Wall Street Journal has reported, though the judge has the final say, Hunter Biden faces a maximum sentence of 12 months in prison and a fine of $25,000 on each count. But it has been, as I said, recommended that he just receive probation alone. Now, the pretrial diversion on the gun offense, that, is, uh, that specifies that Hunter must remain drug-free and agree to never own a firearm again. If he doesn't uh, adhere to that, the charge carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in jail and a hefty fine. Uh, what I think is interesting about that, and it goes back, I, I, I'm not being conspiratorial, but a lot of people, I'm not even saying it, a lot of people have said, that's the trick that mainstream media does, right? A lot of people are saying, so I'm gonna use it, why not? Uh, a lot of people said at the time when the cocaine was found, found in the White House, I think Judge Janine put it really perfectly, she, she highlighted it, that that would screw up this whole plea deal if it were to be traced back to Hunter. So that's why many people thought after no um, interviews, no, no nothing, <laughs> essentially, after how many few days, they said, oh, investigation over, couldn't find anything. Now, many, myself included, highlighted the fact that, heaven forbid, that was some other substance that would be very harmful. Do you think they could have tracked down who brought it in? with the cameras and also what this means for the White House itself, which should be a very secure venue. Now, one of the most secure, uh, if not the most secure in the country. So to just throw up your hands and say we couldn't find anything is troubling for what, uh, what potentially that could lead to. I don't want to go back in and relitigate that. It does seem done. But the reason I mention it is because a part of this plea deal is he does have to say, stay sober. So what would that have done if it were? Others speculated it, if it were his. Now, will more information emerge about the years-long investigation? Yes, most likely. Prosecutors are expected to file what is known as a statement of facts, a part of a plea agreement that outlines the conduct to which a defendant is pleading guilty. Now, this is where I go back to. Does this mark an end to Hunter Biden's legal troubles? Perhaps, but certainly not to his pro to the prominent place in the news. So, yes, it could be the end, and everything's perhaps and probably because we won't know until later today, but that uh, they believe it's still going to be a news story. But you already see it. Jonathan Turley pointed it out, but you've seen it elsewhere. Now, it's time to drop it. It's time to move on. Um, asking Chris Christie, uh, do you think it's time your party dropped this? <laughs> the plea agreement is a step toward resolving the legal issues before uh, Joe Biden's re-election bid, but House Republicans are vowing to forge ahead with their own probe. So hopefully we learn more there. We learned a lot from the IRS whistleblowers, so-called whistleblowers, the media says, <laughs> trying to downplay all this. They're concerned. I mean, the polls show that people don't want Biden to run in general, and then to have this, uh, these clouds over his head just makes matters worse in the mind of the media. So they want to, of course, protect him and defend him at all costs, uh, and that's what we're seeing. And again, you can find that piece at uh, jonathanturley.org. When we come back, we'll tell you what Michael Goodwin had to say about it. Just quickly, just kind of highlight a little bit of what he had to say about what this judge should do today at 10. But we do have to take a break because I'm running late. Stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. <laughs> And we are back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Aiken, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio here on Marcus Street in Corning. So I mentioned Michael Goodwin before we took a break. This is the piece from the New York Post. He says the judge must, must nix the Hunter Biden plea deal to show her court won't approve of a blatant miscarriage of justice. And he does make a good point about Anthony, or Anthony, listen to me, that was a slip attorney general merrick garland uh he said that it's it's kind of bitter this bitter parson hack that he is is not that all that bright and what his argument is that if he would have done all of this instead of uh, waiting five years for this case which is just ridiculous um and he got it over with in the first two years of joe's tenure before republicans won the house majority this all would have essentially went away. We wouldn't have learned so much of what we learned, like with the IRS whistleblowers and the hearings. And I thought that was a really good point, something I hadn't really thought about. 
As a result, GOP-led committees have demonstrated beyond a doubt the Department of Justice cooked the books. Testimony from IRS whistleblowers showed that department lawyers obstructed investigators and withheld key evidence, including the laptop, from the probe of the president's crooked son. So I don't want to go through all of this because it's a long, lengthy piece. You can find it at the New York Post as well. Um, but he said the process is normally a routine one where the judge, after getting affirmation that both sides agree to the terms of the plea deal, just approves it and passes the agreed upon sentence. That's how it typically goes. That would mean probation for Hunter Biden and a promise to be a good boy, pay his taxes in the future and not own a gun. But there's an alternative. And if there's any true justice remaining, federal district judge Norica will seize it. She could and should use her power to scuttle the deal on the grounds that the punishment doesn't fit the known crimes and declare that her court will not approve a blatant miscarriage. That would be a bold move in any case where the parties have an agreement, and especially so because of this one. Uh, I do think it's, it's very interesting. He goes through and pushes. I mean, if you look at it, and I mentioned this on my program a while ago, if you look at just the, the federal gun charges, um, this is coming from an administration. So Hunter gets a, not even a slap on the wrist over that, but this is coming from a, a, an administration that is kind of fixated on restricting gun ownership specifically for law-abiding citizens, but uh, gun ownership. So uh, this is a really good piece. It goes into all the reasons why she should reject the plea deal. Uh, I don't think that will happen, and I almost think reading between the lines, uh, Mr. Goodwin feels that way, but it would be very fascinating uh, to see where that would lead. And, of course, Republicans are still working behind the scenes to make sure that we get the truth on all of this with Hunter. Okay. Also, I know I'm going to jump through a lot of things now because I wanted to mention that. But McCarthy yesterday signaled again, uh, kind of the red line is the term a lot of people are using for a possible Biden impeachment. We're going to talk about that when we come back, just to give you an idea of what he had to say about it. Uh, there's quite a few other things. Oh, and the media is just going after him for that. Like I mentioned earlier on in the program, uh, Stephen Collinson couple of uh, presidential issues, and if we get a chance, a few New York State issues. As always, you can contact me. I would love to hear uh, from you. And thank you again to Kristen B uh, Brewer for being on the program from the Gaffer District. You can find out more at gafferdistrict.com. And don't forget that Cruising Community Night is this Friday from 5 to 9 p.m. on Bridge Street between Riverside Drive and Pulteney Street. You can register for, and it sounds like so much fun, but register uh, for the Power Wheels event. You know, you have to be young, but it, you can register for that online. Get all that paperwork filled out before you head over to Bridge Street on Friday. Okay, let's take a short break. Oh, and with that contact information, I know I just took it down, but if you ever have any questions about our guests or something maybe you missed and you're looking for some of that background information, I can always find that for you. Just contact me. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV. Big Fox, please stay with us. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the Hasselstein studio, this is Frankly Speaking. I'm your host, Frank Akam. So Speaker McCarthy revealed what would be the tipping point for the possible Biden impeachment inquiry. What I've said, and this is what he told Fox News, what I've said is if they withhold information, the impeachment inquiry allows Congress to have the apex of power to get all the information they need. All this information people are finding out now is only because Republicans have investigated. And that's the Michael Goodwin's point, where if uh, Garland uh, would have done this earlier, this is specifically with Hunter, uh, not the, the connection with Joe necessarily, but if they would have done it earlier, got it over with, uh, Republicans wouldn't have had that subpoena power. That's interesting, isn't it? The people of America have a right to know what went on. They have a president who lied to the American public and say they didn't get any money from China. We know that's true. We've had whistleblowers from the IRS come say the Biden family is treated differently and the other things are going on. And then you have an informant with the FBI saying there was a bribe. We need to know the answer to this. McCarthy added that if at any time he felt they weren't going to be able to get the information they needed to progress through the investigation, that that would rise to the level of impeachment inquiry. That's not happening today. But what I'm explaining to everybody is that if we don't get that information, I will go to impeachment inquiry to make sure we get all 
the answers. Now, again, I, I mentioned this because it's almost laughable when the media doesn't see that the exact things they're describing is what they did to, for instance, uh, Trump, or uh, really any Republican president. Trump was just uh, highlighted. Uh, Stephen Collinson said the House Republican majority is hitting its stride as a fully weaponized arm of Donald Trump's bid for a second White House term as it seeks to drag President Joe Biden into a swamp of so, so far, I like that, so far unsubstantiated corruption allegations. Does that seem like he's covering for himself in case something changes? So far, that, that caught my attention. But basically what he's suggesting is that uh, as soon as people heard the I word, as he calls it, given its constitutional connotations, immediately sent shockwaves running through Washington, even as it raised the somewhat fundamental question of precisely which supposed abuses of office House Republicans, what? who have so far produced no concrete evidence of wrongdoing, were laying against the president. Can you imagine after the four years of Trump in the White House, that he would act as if throwing around the term impeachment was, would send shockwaves. And where's the evidence? I mean, my goodness, what wasn't an impeachable offense back then, according to the media? So that's why I say, you look at the media, how they handle these situations, and then CNN wonders why they lack the credibility and, and why they don't have uh, trust from, the, from viewers, not their viewers, their viewers are down. But anyway, so basically describing to McCarthy what they did for four years under Trump. And it's fascinating. But I, I see those things, and I like to highlight the bias in the media uh, for you on this program. Not that you probably need it. I'm sure you see it uh, in your daily life. We've got to take another short break. When we come back, presidential issues and maybe a couple New York issues. We're moving fast. We've got a lot of ground to cover, and we just have a short time to get there. So stay with us. This is, frankly speaking, on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. <laughs> Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I sometimes, well, I often mention the New York Post uh, in the reporting they do. Obviously, when we talk about Hunter, they were the ones that broke the laptop, the laptop story and were um, censored because of it, even though it was uh, proven factually true what they were reporting. I don't want to get back into that, but why I mention it is the New York Post has not been, for quite a while, the friendliest towards Trump especially when it comes to editorials. And so I saw this and I wanted to get your opinion on it. I would love to hear from you on it because I thought, um, I think it's a little naive, but I think also I, I understand what they're saying in a way. So what they're asking, and I'll put it up on the screen here for you to, to, to see for yourself. Trump wants to skip the GOP debate. That's what it sounds like. First couple maybe his uh, argument is why the, he's so far ahead in the polls. What does he have to, to gain? The Post editorial board says, great, Republicans can tackle real issues. So what they say in the piece and I, is basically that Trump is for Trump. So when he takes over a debate, it goes to, in their words, um, calling his rivals names, insulting their looks like a kid in middle school. And that will lead to the other candidates being forced to respond. The reason I say, and again, I would love to hear your opinion. I know we've had people write in that aren't big fans of Trump, and you know, maybe you, maybe you were a fan of Trump. Maybe there's a, a candidate that you like more, or maybe you're a Biden supporter. I would like to get your opinion. The reason why I said it's naive, and I didn't mean to kind of uh, put a bias in there before I asked the question to you, but I believe that if Trump's not there, he will still be the lion's share of the discussion. What their argument is, and I think it's a good point, and it's something you'd like to see in the debate, is that this will give um, the candidates a time to talk about the failures of Bidenomics and Biden. So then they can highlight the ultimate opponent for the Republicans in the general election of being Biden, most likely. Again, I understand why they feel that way, but I, I can't imagine you can see the coverage over the last however many years since Trump started debating, or really since he went down the golden escalator when he declared, what would make you think that the whole discussion wouldn't be about him? And that's what the media would want, especially considering he's not there to defend himself. They would love, they would love the sound bites of all the candidates attacking Trump in some way. 
that would give them so many news stories to attack Republicans in general, but attack Trump specifically. So I think maybe in the New York Post's utopian worldview on this, that all of a sudden these these guys can uh, these candidates, I should say, because um, it's men and women, uh, that they would somehow just focus on Biden. I'd love to see that. I would love to see a debate with all the candidates just focus on Biden as well. But that's not going to ultimately be the case if history's proven anything. But he finishes, or the, I should say the post finishes. If Trump does not want to debate, that is his decision alone. But if he doesn't, it is an opportunity for the American people to judge his rivals without it descending into a grievance session that falls in the same trap. You're telling me they're not going to ask about the indictments, about the impeachments, about, well, Trump said this recently on Truth Social. That'll be the whole debate. No matter what outlet the first one's on, I'm assuming Fox, but I, I don't remember off the top of my head. No matter what outlet uh, that the, the first debate or first couple debates, uh, whatever one's broadcasting it, it will be all about Trump because that fits the media's narrative of this is a great soundbite. This will be perfect. This is candidate X talking bad about Trump. It, 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 I, again, I just think it's naive, but if you disagree with me, I would love to hear from you. What do you think if Trump were to skip the GOP debate? Would it be a debate of substance? And I will admit, when Trump is uh, involved in the debate, it does get into some back and forth. And some candidates are foolish enough to try to out-Trump Trump. That always makes you look bad as you see with uh, Jeb Bush so please weigh in contact me at any time but we do have to take a short break stay with us we'll be right back with frankly speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox <laughs> Wrapping up this edition of Frankly Speaking, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio on Market Street. I'm your host, Frank Aiken. Let's go through a couple of quick, fast headlines because we're out of time. DeSantis let go more than a third of his campaign staff as he continues with that reset. We know he's made some changes on how he handles the media, what outlets he goes to, getting rid of staff, which direction in general. There's a, a lot of pieces. I think this is wishful thinking from those in the media. Uh, but it's, it's very fascinating to watch the uh, Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy moving up in the polls and rapidly. He had, That's undeniable, according to polls, if you believe polls. So uh, he's kind of an anti-woke crusader. He's, uh, he's someone that's for free speech. It's, it's very fascinating uh, to see his rise because many of us, I mean, you've heard about it. You heard he was running. He's a billionaire but didn't really know much more about him. The more people see of him, the more they like. Now, then you instantly see the articles that said, threat to Trump. Is he a threat to Trump? Well, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. Time will tell. Uh, but you can find out more on that piece at NBC News. RFK Jr. rips the White House's bad decisions, but won't say whether Biden is fit to serve as president, saying, I'm not trying to go personal tax, and basically saying he was never, he's never been that very good at words in the first place. Boy, the media is out for him, aren't they? Okay, that is it. Oh, Republican voters appeal the court ruling ordering New York congressional redistricting redo. So uh, we knew that there was going to be appeal there. And the Buffalo News has a piece, Langworthy and Higgins demonstrate what bipartisanship can achieve. And that was on the, the bill I told you about just the other day, about uh, 1,500 hours of um, that standard being for pilots. Okay, we are out of time. We were out of time a while ago. Thank you to our guest, Kristen Brewer from the Gaffer District. Find out more about Friday's event at gafferdistrict.com. We will see you tomorrow morning starting at 7 a.m. for Frankly Speaking right here on WYDC-TV. Big Fox, I look forward to it.